I'll show you how we're going to disassemble the rear brake caliper of a Saab 900. So this is a right rear caliper. In the car, it sits that way with the handbrake cable coming in through here and then uh, attaching it to the handbrake lever. <clears throat> the reason why I'm taking this out is because there's clearly a leak which is coming out from the handbrake pivot here. And if you look at the adjustment screw aperture, you can just about see that it's really wet. And that's um, an indication that one of the seals in the mechanism uh, has, um, has failed. So I'm going to show how we're going to open this caliper up so that we can change the, uh, the seals. Um, first up, the caliper is um, disassembled by removing this piston. This piston is held, um, uh, or rather has a dust cover with this clip that you see over it. Um, so we'll just leave that for a second because what is important is going to be the uh, adjustment screw at the back, the one I showed you a bit earlier on this one. So this adjustment screw here is connected uh, to the main piston via a gear mechanism that kind of like, as it turns, it screws the piston out via a, a thread uh, a threaded bolt, which is similar to this one uh, over here, right? So this one sits there behind and is and um, is um, attached to, and I'll show you something, right? So this is goes into there, well, from the other side. Um, actually, no, from this side as well. And what is it? What it does is it um, turns it uh, this way, right? As you turn this little screw here, and what this does is it then pushes, and this is a piston I've got. Um, so it then pushes the piston in and out of, of the uh, cylinder. But let's um, put that aside for a second and then we'll figure out how to open this one here. So if you use an, uh, an Allen key to turn it, now this is where some of the calipers get seized up because this adjustment screw here no longer fails to turn. And very often that causes the whole thing to seize up. And as this piston moves, uh, forward as the brake pads get thinner, then when it comes time to change the brake pads, you can't retract this by turning this and therefore the whole caliper is um, shot. Uh, but if you can turn it, then basically you can continue turning it and it'll start to either retract or in this case extend. So I'm just going to turn it slowly and if you look at the piston over here, it's going to extend towards the left, okay? So you can see it slowly extending towards the left um, and as it does so, it will eventually reach the end of the piston. So essentially what's happening is that I am, if I just simulate this here, right? So what I'm doing is I'm slowly retracting this and pushing the piston out going to the left and then eventually it will come off and then we can pull that totally out. So the idea is to continue turning this little bolt here all the way until the uh, piston uh, comes out, right? So I'm turning clockwise, because if I do clockwise, then of course the bolt goes anti-clockwise, and anti-clockwise will effectively push the bolt out of the piston, or in this case, the piston uh, out of the bolt. So it's continuing to move, you can see, um, continues to do so. Um, the good thing is the mechanism continues to turn fairly easily. Now, if it doesn't turn and it's seized, I recommend that you grip this and you pull it gently to help push the, 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 the piston forward, right? So at this time, you can uh, choose to remove the dust cover now, um, uh, which, which I think uh, I will do uh, here, so that we can uh, then remove the uh, dust cover uh, effectively and, um, and then um, just do that. Okay, like so. Let's remove the dust cover here. <clears throat> right, okay. And then we'll continue. Um, so you can see already that there is um, brake fluid that's on the adjustment screw, which is not good because there's a seal, which um, if you've seen earlier on, I'll show you this one here. So there is a gap here. And just let me do that. There is a gap here, which um, this little o-ring, I'll put it so it's more visible, that little o-ring goes into and over 
this um, screw here and that is really the barrier between the pressurized side, which is this side, the bolt, bolt side, and then the unpressurized side, which is this one. So if this uh, little seal here, uh, O-ring here fails, then of course the oil is going to go from the, from the pressurized side into the other side and then appear through the um, both actually, both the adjustment screw, you can see it's already dripping, adjustment screw um, as well as the uh, mechanism, uh, the, the handbrake mechanism, which was the source of my, uh, my leak in the first place. So just let me dry that up a bit. It gets really messy. Save that little bronze uh, O-ring. Okay, so um, we'll continue extending it here. And, uh, let me just do this a bit, and I'll help it along by pulling it on the uh, on the ridge of the piston. It's a bit stiff, but not impossible, and it's free. Okay, so it's totally free now. Um, I'm continuing turning it, but it's not coming out at all. So it's now held uh, in with a bit left um, with the o-ring that is within the cylinder and that's what gives it um the uh the, the, the that's what's holding it in right now so it looks something like this this is inside here i'll, I'll show it to you uh, shortly and uh, this is what's really the second uh seal the circular one i showed you the tiny one that goes into here that's the first seal here right and then there's another seal there so if you often see that you're going to get brake fluid seeping out from the piston itself then chances are that this seal has failed but if you see it coming out of the back part of it um, including the adjustments uh, screw then this uh, o-ring uh, would have failed but uh, you know we're going to just change both anyway and they normally sell them in pairs together with a, a spare boot a, a spare ring um, and covers for these two um, mounting Allen keys. So, 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 oh, it's actually fairly easy. There you go. Oh, drag. I think I've just dropped a whole boatload of, um, um, so let me get a, a dirty rag here and that's a disaster. Um, there goes my table. So anyway, um, so, so that's it, right? So you can see that this is the mechanism while we, uh, sort that out. This is the mechanism inside the piston. Um, and the screw that's still in there that I'm going to teach you how to get, get out of the caliper is the one that goes into here like what I showed you earlier on. All right. Um, there is a spring and, um, and a kind of ratchet mechanism from what I understand. I don't honestly fully understand what's inside here. But what it does is as the brake pads wear thinner, so let me just do that for you, right? So as the brake pads get thinner and it wears in, what it does is it slowly rotates itself out. That means that your handbrake is always going to be um, at the same position rather than have it all the way uh, you know, up to the sky as the brake pads get thinner and thinner and this, this uh, piston has to move further and further out. So, so essentially, if I, don't, if I stop this from moving and I turn this, it kind of like goes out as the brake pads uh, wear, okay? So, um, so that's how it works. So anyway, I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to have to wash all this because you can see it's all gunky, but the pressurized side is here. So it's quite normal for fluid to be accumulating uh, in there. But in this case, I also see some, I'm actually opening this up for the first time. So whatever you're seeing is uh, just as a surprise to me as well. So we've got some waxy stuff, um, probably I don't know, maybe some anti-corrosion stuff that was in the in the piston prior to it being used. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean all this out. Uh, anyway, excuse the uh, dirty rag, but that was the only one I had um, with me. Okay, so we've soaked up quite a bit of it. Let's take a look at what's inside the um, the, um, the caliper. So, excuse the dirty rag again. I really must apologize for this. I'll get it out of your way. All right. So, um, what's inside? All right. So, I don't know whether you can see. It's all really black. So, I'm gonna uh, see whether I can um, get a get a light of some sort so that I can uh, show it to you. Or, or maybe what I can do is um, ah, you can just about see it, right? You can see the bulb, which is uh, this particular bulb here. You can see that um, here. 
you can see the, the ball there. I'm going to move it to the center of the camera again. Um, if you can see it there. No, the, the light's really kind of bad. Ah, that's better. Okay. So this here is the, uh, that bolt that I was telling you about. And this bolt is held down by a circlip that's all the way in there. And this is where the biggest challenge is, right? Because you only have this gap here to allow you to put your circuit pliers in, grip the circuit, um, pull it, and then remove it. And when that happens, then the bolt uh, comes off. The bolt is held in. I'll show you what the circuit looks like. Put a spare one here. And um, uh, where is it? I don't have one anymore. It's a bit, don't know where I put it now. Um, oh, here it is. Okay, so it looks something like that, right? So at the bottom, so when this goes to the bottom, the circlip goes over here like that, right? And then prevents it from, from coming out. So basically you've got to grip this circlip at the bottom of the, uh, of, of the cylinder here, grip it, remove it, and then it just comes off. And what's behind it? Well, behind it is a bit of a depression, which allows a little, I call it like a little pill, right? This thing here to sit there. And what happens is this pushes the, uh, um, or rather it's pushed by the handbrake. So when the handbrake lever gets pulled, there's a mechanism that kind of like bends it this way, if you can imagine. So when it bends it this way, it just then pushes the cylinder, uh, pushes the piston, and then applies the handbrake. This is actually as simple as that. And very often this gets very, well, in this case you can tell it's really corroded. So um, it's kind of like stuff that you've got to clean at the same time. So let me put the circlip away and then we'll take a look at that. So how do you remove the circlip when it's all the way down there? Well, you could get a, um, a, a very a thin kind of long nose plier. Of course, that's going to be uh, ideal. Uh, oh, sorry, or rather a circuit pliers. But what I managed to do is a surgical suture forceps. So it's a very, I've ground the tip to be so thin and narrow such that it can grip the circlip. I'll show you how I do it. So I grip it that way, right? You can tell, just about, just about grip it, right? And thin and slender enough to fit through the cavity that I showed you earlier on. So if I am able to uh, press this together like so, and then I can remove it, okay? So this is what it looks like. Now, it's really gonna be tricky um, I don't know whether I can show it to you at the same time. So um, excuse me if it goes kind of out of um, uh, a view, but um, essentially that, that's how you do it. In fact, uh, it's really, really dirty inside. So what I think I might do is I might wash it out first and then continue the video after it's nice and clean and you can see what's uh, inside, all right? Right, I've uh, cleaned up the cal caliper and I've put the uh, pliers in. Just let me show it to you how it looks like. Um, it's kind of difficult unfortunately because the aperture as you can tell is really tiny but I'll try to see whether I can show it to you as best as I can. So you can just about see right that the uh, tip of the forceps is engaged on the circlip right at the bottom. I'm gonna try to pull it out. It's the first time I'm doing it so excuse me if I don't get it right the first time. So, uh, it's uh, really tight. Uh, yep, here you go, here you go. This is easy. Now, this is an aftermarket caliper. So you'll see that the circuit is slightly different from the one I showed you earlier on, which uh, is, I think, a bit more secure. So the one I showed you earlier on has a uh, tab uh, right at the end, um, this end here. And this one doesn't have it. So I think the advantage of that one clearly is that it um, is more secure. Uh, it doesn't fall off uh, that easily. And as usual, I've forgotten where I've uh, put it in some way here, probably. Um, I don't know where it is now. Dear. So, uh, well, yeah, this is what it looks like, okay? So for the one that has a tab, the one that is, is missing, you've got to orientate it and rotate the circlip at the base of the cylinder such that it aligns with a gap. If there's a little tab here, the original one, you have to align it to where the gap is before, before you pull it. But um, let me just unlock this. Uh, okay, there you go. Okay, so this is out. 
So I'll put that aside. I'll probably lose that again like the one I did before. So then it's kind of free to, to come out, that bolt that you have uh, in there that uh, I showed you, right? So you can actually wiggle it and see whether it comes out. And I think this one's, yeah, there you go. There you go, it comes off. And this one here, if I just clean it up a bit of all the liquid. So this will be, let me just give you a bit of contrast. So this is the um, seal that would have failed. Then yeah, it looks pretty, I don't even know whether it's the right quality of seal here, but um, since it's dot four glycol base, you should be using EPDM uh, seals. So when you do get the seals, try to get the EPDM ones, which will be impervious to uh, glycol-based brake fluids like our dots uh, three and four, okay? So, but it looks pretty good. The uh, most important thing, I'll just move this aside. Uh, the most important thing here is that the teeth are fairly still well formed. Um, it's not bad because you can see it's fairly shallow. So they break off fairly easily. And when they do that, then of course you can't engage with that little um, uh, with that little tooth anymore, right? So, uh, so that's the problem. So anyway, that's that's part number one. Oh, here it is. Um, it's just gone under there. So I'll compare the two. So you can see this is the this is from an original one, and this is from the aftermarket one. So in the original one, you will see that at the bottom of the cylinder where the circlip sits, there is a separate, there's a bit of an opening that is slightly larger in one corner. So the idea is you rotate it until it gets to that gap, uh, compress the circlip and then remove it. Whereas this one clearly is just a regular um, uh, circlip from the aftermarket um, calipers that I have here. Okay, so, so just, uh, oh, okay. Oh, I see something in there. Let me just take that out. This is that pill that I was telling you about. The little thing that actuates the, the handbrake. Let's just dry that up and wash it later on. Okay. Um, and uh, it's pretty much nothing else under it, really, uh, except for the adjustment screw, which you remove from the uh, other side. So let me just that in. Okay. So that's the adjustment screw at that. And you can just about see something shiny right in there. And that's a clip which um, just holds the adjustment screw in. The adjustment screw isn't held by anything except that clip. And I'll show you what that clip looks like. So this is the clip. So this is how it looks like. So the idea is that you use a uh, screwdriver and you just turn it round and round, right, anti-clockwise until it comes out of the um, the adjustment hole and the adjustment screw will then pop out. So I'm going to try to do it. Sometimes I, I found it to be a bit stiff. Uh, oh, okay. I, um, so ah, I think it's a bit stiff here. So I think I might need to uh, uh, do something to, to get it out. Uh, sorry, it's out of view here. Um, I'll tell you what, um, I'm going to try to remove it, but essentially you use this um, screwdriver, uh, a pen knife uh, uh, screwdriver, and uh, you rotate that little uh, clip until it comes out, and then um, if you tap, the, tap the, gen the, the screw gently from this side, in fact, you will be able to just about see it at the top uh, of this cylinder right at the bottom, if you just insert a screwdriver, and you, you can actually tap it out and, and it'll come off. But I don't think um, I'm going to have any success now, so I'm going to try to uh, wash it out and then do it again. So I've unwound the clip almost entirely, and um, I've just placed it back for you to take a look. But this is how it looks like when it comes off. And um, this is all there is to it, right? Uh, okay, I'll put that aside now. The adjustment screw is free to come out now, and I'm just gonna see that it's uh, loose. Yep, it's quite loose and uh, and uh, and uh, it can come off easily. I'll see whether I can bang it out. Now, if you can't, then you will be able to push it through the cylinder itself. The screw is here, and this is the cavity that it sits in. So, if you can just try to reach the top of the cylinder there and push it out, that should just pop uh, out fairly easily. So, I'm gonna use my um, forceps uh, 
uh, again to try to push it. Oh, there it goes. And you can see through it already. You can see the clearance on the other side. And this is what it is. So that's all that holds the adjustment screw to it. Um, and it looks pretty okay. And I think for as long as you don't try to force it, it's going to be fine. And uh, this is how it looks like. So it does that, right? Yeah. Um, and um, so that's it. So uh, what you do need to do is, of course, change this particular seal here. And if we can take a look at the other seal, the, the big O-ring, it sits uh, there, okay, around there. So you can just remove that one and uh, pop this one in. Um, you use a bit of rubber grease if you want to, to ease it going in. And then, as they say, assembly is the uh, reverse of um, pulling it out. So hopefully that will... Um, show you how to uh, change the two seals. Now, I haven't gone ahead to open up this thing here, which, allow, which allows you to access the handbrake mechanism under it. I've never really had to do that. Um, some people have had to do that because this becomes seized. I've never had that situation, so I hope you don't have that either, and that means you don't have to remove the uh, top of the cap. All right, okay, happy repairing.